What's good everyone, Niall here. Welcome to another King K. Rule guide where we're going to be taking a look at movement. Skips and Kirby Kid will be joining me in today's video and they will be helping me out with the topics of neutral and stalling your recovery with the Kremlin King. Alrighty Skips, take it away. Hello everyone, Skips here to demonstrate more of an inside look on how you should approach neutral with King K. Rule. Now Crown is definitely one of King K. Rule's biggest tools in his moveset. It sets up for damage, zoning, and even potential kill confirms. K rule, man. Oh, whoa! He almost, is he dead? He's dead! But you should also be careful on how to throw it out as the crown can be used against you as an item if you're not careful. Crown is best used at a set distance or one in the bandage state when it comes to less trapping. I highly recommend practicing macro wave bouncing as it really benefits King K rule to catch some approaches on your opponent with a crown. Now, before throwing out the crown, you have to think on how your opponent reacts to it depending on the situation. If you're able to predict that your opponent is going to approach with an aerial that won't break the crown armor, it's best to set up for jab 1 into 2 as it sets up for the returning crown, which could lead to setups such as jab 1 into 2, returning crown into an air, up tilt, or even kill confirm such as returning crown into up smash or up air. Another way the opponent can react to the crown is through the use of empty jumping. And of course, grabbing can carry with and lag from the crown though if used too close. They could also jump away and respect the crown pretty much for setting neutral. Most of the time, you should position the crown when you're in advantage state, especially when your opponent is off stage in order to condition them to recover low. Set up edge guards with the use of Nair, for instance, to take early stocks. It is also possible in some cases to use crown throw to escape juggles depending if the aerial the opponent is throwing out of King K. Rule can be crown armored in that exact moment. Now I will turn it over to Niall in which he will explain platform usage with King K. Rule. One of the most underrated aspects of K. Rule is the usage of platforms. The first thing I want to cover is the fundamental tech called crown bouncing. Discovered by DK Davey, this tech allows King K. Rule to turn mid-air when catching the crown upon return. K. Rule can essentially get the same turnaround effect of a B-reverse with this technique. Crown bouncing can also be performed if the crown is resting on a platform or the stage. Here are a few common actions you can perform with crown bouncing. If you want to see more crown bouncing combos or crown combos alike, check out my crown combo guide linked in the description and in the top right hand corner iCard. An underrated and useful tool of Blunderbuss is slipping through platforms. A key aspect to using Blunderbuss is how you position yourself on platforms. When ledge trapping, understand your opponent's most popular ledge options and position K rule accordingly. To cover your opponent's roll and ledge attack, angle the control stick diagonal and down away from the ledge. If you think your opponent made normal get up, the center or the closest to your opponent position on the platform is the most ideal. Normally when I utilize the platforms of King K rule, I stand in the middle of the platform to give myself the most options. By standing in the middle, I can drop straight through the platform, drop to the diagonal left, or drop to the diagonal right. Standing in the middle of the platform allows me to cover every single get up option in the game. If they jump off of the ledge, I can simply stand on the platform. If they go for a roll, I can move backwards on the platform. If they go for a normal get up, I can move forwards on the platform. Or I can simply just drop straight through if they go for a normal get up. Any of those options work best. It's all about how you space it and the matchup you're playing against. Hey guys, it's me Kirby Kid, and today I will be talking about stalling your recovery and the options you have recovering as K rule. Stalling with up air off stage works extremely well when you're wanting something like arson to dwindle out so that you don't have to deal with it when trying to recover. It's best used when you have a jump save, so you have that safety measure in case you mistime your up airs or just need that jump in order to recover. You can go into training mode and practice stalling with up air, so in bracket you'll have it mastered. As for recovery options, it mostly boils down to just grabbing the ledge. There are a multitude of ways in order to do so though. As stated before, you can use up air to stall, but it's also used to recover. It's almost like an extra jump for K roll. Just be careful you don't use it too low to the blast zone, or it won't end up uh, too well for you. Against certain characters, some are able to hit through K propeller due to having big disjoints. 
Against those characters, riding the wall can sometimes help throw off the opponent's timing. The best way to recover against those characters though is saving your jump, using up air to get closer to ledge, and air dots to the ledge if you can reach it. Obviously there are situations where you're forced to up B in order to recover. You can try holding down on the left stick when up being so that you don't grab the ledge and the propeller hitbox potentially beat the disjoint. Though there are still some characters whose disjoints outreach the propeller. With that being said, that's going to be the end of today's video, everyone. Thank you all for watching. If you want to check out Skips or Kirby Kids content, links to their socials will be in the description. My name is Niall, and I will catch you all next time. See ya.